Thanks for your company. The details now. Workers of the Ghana Grid Company, Gridco, are warning of more power outages if government fails to address the debt situation of the power transmitter. According to them, he, the huge debt is negatively affecting the operations of the company as well as staff welfare. They told Joy News at the celebration of Workers' Day in Koforidia that the state power transmitter is on the verge of collapse due to the huge debt owed them by PDS, Valco and other state institutions. Having a blackout does not mean that we are intimidating anybody, but we want government and as, as well as as matter of fact, the state should know that we are in debt. We are dying. Vico is going down. Let me tell you, ECG is owing about 600 million Ghana cities. Vaco is owing about 28 million dollars. All these debts is in, help, uh, impeding Vico not to develop. As I'm telling you now, 70 percent of our, our low shedding is coming for technical issues. It's coming for technical issues. I'm telling you that ECG is taking about 65 percent of low transmitting. And all these debts are not paid. I'm not, I'm not a doomsayer, but if any line trip, we don't have any insulator to change. They are very serious issues and I think the government should take a closer look at it. Uh, when you look at uh, our cash inflows and then our expenditures, look, we are not even able to satisfy our wage bill. How much more con uh, satisfying issues that has to do with um, our allowances and the rest? <laughs> Well, ranking member of Parliament's Mines and Energy Committee, Adam Mutawakilu, believes Gritco's financial challenges is as a result of government's incompetence in managing the sector. Yeah, it's a clear vindication of the minority. As we indicated it, this uh, issue earlier on, emphasize it over and over again. But the government continued to deny the challenges that Gritco is going through and tend to blame it on technical issues. I think now Grito is, uh, the staff of Grito has come out openly. I urge government to, so as a matter of business, fixing the financial challenges that these state owned enterprises in the power sector are going through. Grito has been suffering since MPP came to power. And now, uh, the man in charge do not care what these agencies are going through. After President Mama has given him an extra that is the rate of regulate about three, 3 billion Ghana cities to the extra uh, fund. And I don't know why Rico has to go through this. Let me tell you, in 2018, Rico could not carry out regular maintenance of their transmission line because there's no money. They couldn't recruit any qualified staff or any other staff because there's no money. Meanwhile, people are going on retirement. And it is a clear manifestation of the incompetence of the Nana Akubuado government and their unwillingness to take both steps to resolve these uh, financial uh, challenges facing the energy sector agency. Mm. Mr. Matakilu, you sit on the Energy Committee in Parliament, and I'm sure for many Ghanaians, they don't want the usual NPP, NDC back and forth on this. You have a committee in Parliament. Has any plan to settle this debt come to your table? The issue of this has come up several times. And as a minority in the committee, it is our responsibility to draw government's attention and to let Ghanaians know the true state of this energy sector agency. And that is what we have done over the over time. But government having control over the resources and 
being those implementing policy has continuously refused to accept the constructive criticism from the minority in the committee. This is a known fact to the committee. We have made several attempts. But government is not willing. And until this agency is collapsed, government is not willing to take any action. And that is why we are experiencing two songs when all indicators show that we shouldn't have two so at this point in time. Because we have enough installed capacity, we have the fuel, but when there is no money and you are not solving it, you will continue to experience this two so. The minority's ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee there he spoke to me earlier on news decks. Now, but the minority in parliament is kicking against government's agreement with AGM Petroleum, which they won, will reduce Ghana's stake in the South Deep Water Tunnel contract area from 48% to 18%. The proposed amendment was laid in parliament on Monday and is suspected to be approved before the House uh, rises tomorrow. Remember, they came from an for an emergency sitting out. Former Petroleum Minister Kofi Bua says the block will eventually go to Aka Energy and the move is to create a convenient environment for them. He says they will not support the proposed amendment. We'll be going uh, to Parliament uh, later in the bulletin to get more details on this from our correspondent Joseph Opogakpo. But today marks day three of the National Identification Authority's registration for the Ghana card. The nationwide mass registration exercise began in Accra and will end in March 2020 in the central region. One of the main concerns of prospective registrants is the Ghana Post GPS requirement. Now, you are required to generate your residential address digitally to facilitate the process. Nancy Amefadra Dosi has been speaking to some people who are raising concerns about that. <laughs> Yeah, they are by uh, Ghana card. At the same time, no, I have a passport. I am angry because and they tell uh, us we cannot use our voter ID. They talk about some GPS. I don't even know what it is. I want government to look at this. Ghana post me go share the name. What me? I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a Ghana card. It's me. Kaka, I'm a Ghana. Say, mungu ni mama. Na sa ID card mpo ne be yusua. Na yenti mi yusu. I I came here to register and they demanded my birth certificate. I have never owned one. They wouldn't even take my voter ID and other documents. There are too many requirements and I would urge the president to take a look at it again. They've been saying things I don't even understand. They refuse to take my voter ID and ask me to bring my GPS address, and I don't have it. This is frustrating. So, my it's too difficult. Now, head of corporate affairs of the Ghana Post, Kobi Hema Osisi Adan, has been explaining measures put in place to address the concerns of registrants. Since last year, we have people going around various um generating the new address for people. We still have about 300 branches of our post offices nationwide. You can just reach out to them for assistance. If you can read a writer like myself and Bennett, we advise you go to theganapostgps.com. 
we have all the information there. You can go to our Facebook, we have the information there. You can call us for assistance. You can send us a message on Facebook. We are ready to assist. And better still, better. If I'm not really used to technology, what I can do is that I can reach out to you, my friend, and let you send me the data address for me. Mm. may not be very used to our, our means and modes of communication and so may totally be unaware of, of, of generating digital addresses, especially for um, uh, getting the Ghana card. Thank you, my sister. For the purpose of this exercise, um, majority of the centers will dispatch our team to be there. So our team is there and we will entreat Ghanaians that if you don't have it and you go to the center, just ask the NIA people to show you the Ghana Post Rep that is there. And the event that at that center, you don't have any Ghana Post Rep there, just let the um, NIA official there give us a call. They will, they will have our contact. They will give us a call and we will call for immediate assistance for the first person. Kobi Osisiadam spoke to me earlier on news desk. Now, government is among many employers who have defaulted in payment of workers' contributions to the Social Insurance and National uh, Insurance, Social Security and National Insurance Trusts. In it, addressing hundreds at the May Day Parade, TUC Secretary General Dr. Anthony Yaba expressed concern about the inconsistent manner government is paying workers' contribution. Mr. President, before I shift to another issue. Let me mention one factor which is hindering progress in our pension system. And that has to do with the huge government indebtedness to SNIT and the second tier occupational pension schemes. We are aware that government transferred over 3 billion to public sector second tier schemes in 2018. But that was a small step in the right direction. The truth is that government still owes SNIT and second tier schemes millions, if not billions, of Ghana cities. We cannot expect our pension schemes to perform effectively and efficiently if government, which is the single largest employer with over 600,000 workers on its payroll, fails to pay social security contributions. If there is any factor that can lead to the collapse of our pension schemes, it is the persistent non-payment of social security contributions by government. Mr. President, once again, we are appealing to you to change this situation. In a quick reaction at the same event, President Akufado assured workers' government will pay 200 out of some 900 million arrears owed SNIT soon. I'm informed that the Ministry of Finance has arranged for payment of 200 million CDs and the bond of 700 million CDs towards the retirement of the arrears owed to SNIT. This will leave arrears of 200 of 800 million CDs, which will be included in next year's budget. Now, Head of Public Affairs at SNIT, Ifwa Amankwasa Akodia, speaking to me on News Desk a while ago, said SNIT is engaging government on the way forward. Oh, it didn't have to take that. And um, as you may have gathered from the speeches from both, um, I think, the President and the General Secretary for TUC, um, SNIT has been engaging government on, on these areas. Um, I, I, I could even say almost on a daily or weekly basis, there is engagement. I think that government is quite aware of its responsibility to pay um, the SNIT contributions on behalf of their workers. Um, and I, I have to say that in any case, we say that the, the scheme is underwritten by government. And, and so I'm not, government is in no way trying to shirk its responsibility. I think what has happened is a matter of timing. These monies have not been paid on the correct times that we would or, um, ideally prefer to be paid. And we have engaged, and we're very happy with um, the president's assurance that um, these money will be paid um, in the next um, coming days. And so we are very happy. But engagement has been ongoing, mm. and SNIT has not relented on its uh, responsibility at all. 
Well, some will say um, for that 900 million CDs is a lot of money. And mm -hmm. they may argue that you're being too lenient with government. What would you say to that? That is, we're not being lenient. When I say there has been engagement, you know, I, I'm choosing my word, my word carefully. I mean, a, engagement as in we, we have made our, our, our point clear that these monies have to be paid. And as I said, I, I, I think that government is aware of this responsibility. And um, part of that engagement or a result of that engagement is, I think, what we are seeing with the president committing to paying the 900 million and saying that the rest will be paid in 2020. If we have not relented at all, we are not being lenient with government at all, but we also uh, are also cognizant of government's many responsibilities. And, and so sometimes you, you have to, um, that's part of the engagement process, you negotiate and come to an arrangement. And part of, as I said, a result of mm. that arrangement is what we are seeing. Mm. Let's head to Parliament now because the minority is kicking against attempts by government to amend a petroleum agreement with AGM Petroleum, which they warn will reduce Ghana's stake in the South Deepwater Tunnel contract area from 48% to 18%. The proposed amendment was laid in Parliament on Monday and expected to be approved before the House goes on their break tomorrow. Former Petroleum Minister Kofi Boa says the bloc will eventually go to Aka Energy and the move is to create a convenient environment for them. He says they will not, that's the minority, uh, will not support that proposed amendment. Joseph Abukukapu joins me with details. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Benny. I can't imagine the, the kind of debates this um, caused in Parliament because there's already an issue of the Aka energy and how much government is potentially going to lose, according to Imani Africa's projections, uh, if we do not amend an agreement we have with them. Give us more details on this particular agreement and what the majority side of parliament has been saying about the minority's concerns. And so this is an agreement that was signed by the NDC government uh, before they left power, but the uh, energy minister laid a document on the floor of parliament on Monday requesting that that particular agreement be amended. And the indication we're getting is that there are a number of amendments that will be done to the agreement subsequently. This is just number one of the agreement, which uh, has been referred to the Committee on Mines and Safety, so they consider it and recommend to Parliament generally as to whether they should accept the said amendment. But the minority, they've been doing their own analysis of this particular proposed agreement, and they say that uh, any time an exploration agreement is signed, there is a provision that allows for the state as in Ghana to apply more assets when the uh, explorer eventually strikes oil. And with the current strategy, more than 28% was the available uh, amount that the state could acquire, but it's been reduced to 15%. And then secondly, the subsidiary of BNCC, a company called Exploco, which is operating as an independent firm and also has stakes in it, was also expected to acquire 24% of the state, but in the amendment, it's been reduced to zero. And they think that when you add both, the stake of the nation eventually reduced from 43% all the way to 18%. And that's what Emmanuel Amakotubwa says they will be objecting to it. Well, from government, they say the move is to ensure a more um, interesting space is created so more companies will be attracted to explore oil in the country. But the minority disagrees, and it's expected that later today, the Energy Minister, John Peter Mayo, will be in Parliament to meet with the Committee on Mines and Energy to defend the move, after which the Committee will present a report to mm. the House for approval or otherwise tomorrow. Joseph, does the majority admit that this will reduce our stake in, in the Cape Three Point area? Uh, this is something that they are not exactly admitting and insisting uh, that Ghana will actually be getting a lot more in terms of the expected benefit uh, following the third amendment. And uh, that's what we are expecting the Energy Minister Peter Mao to clarify when he appears in Parliament at the Committee of Mines and Energy a little later today. Mm. So Parliament uh, went on a break. They had an emergency. Uh, they resumed for some emergency matters. What else is happening in the House today, even as they prepare to, to resume exactly. their break? And today, they are continuing business, focusing on the companies are quit, they are hoping to pass before they go on their break tomorrow. Except that when you look at the documents and the expected amendments that have to be done, uh, more than a hundred of it, and it raises questions as to whether 
they will be able to complete it before tomorrow uh, when they are expected to. Win. But that's what the House is dealing with at the moment. Earlier, the Minister for Agriculture and also the Minister for uh, Aviation were mm. expected in the House to lay some other agreements for approval. And that generated a bit of a conversation because the uh, ministers themselves were absent. And the minority leader, Harry Naidrizu, was raising questions about how come the House has been recalled for an emergency sitting and ministers who are expected to come help with the business are absent. And he, in his words, are asking that they come back from their holidays and go ahead and help government deal with businesses that need to be dealt with. Honorable Minister, uh, Honorable, Honorable Majority Leader and Minister, are you in a position to present these and make progress? Speaker, the um, substantive minister has some engagement, but we have some deputy minister here who can do so on his behalf. Honorable, uh, uh, I thought I gave you, I indicated you can present the reports if you are ready. The same, Speaker that the Deputy Minister for Aviation is here. So he will do the uh, presentation of that paper on behalf of the Minister. For me. Budget performance report in respect of the mutual of aviation for the period January to December 28. The paper is presented as a fair to the Roads and Transport Committee for Constitution and Report. C. Apologies, that was not the voice of Harry Idris, who was just a snippet of what happened in Parliament earlier today. We will bring you uh, his voice complaining about the attendance of colleague MPs at this emergency sitting of Parliament. Away from Parliament, farmers in the Ashanti and Ahaf regions engaging in tree plantation and other forestation initiatives are improving their incomes. Cultivation and sale of non-timber forest products provides alternative livelihood under the Food and Business Applied Research Fund of the Netherlands. Oheming Terrier has more in the following report. Black pepper, grains of paradise and ami are some produce from the plantation. Experts say the cultivation and sale of non-timber products is a poverty reduction and livelihood improvement tool in rural areas. The Forestry Commission, Ministry of Food and Agriculture, University of Amsterdam and Rural Development Youth Association are among partners. Under the modified Tonja system, co-managed by Forestry Commission and smallholder farmers, it was rolled out two years ago. Besides restoring degraded forests, it is targeted to address Ghana's timber deficit. Farmers told a learning platform meeting with researchers at Nyinehini the project is impacting positively in their lives. Beekeeping is very lucrative. The more boxes you have, the more money you get. It pays better than even cocoa. A quarter of plastic bucket fetches 600 Ghana cities compared to 450 Ghana cities per bag of cocoa. Honey production is so lucrative. A few years ago, I was introduced to black pepper cultivation, which has also helped me a lot. I never ran out of stock, always in the market to sell. Sale of black pepper gives me additional income to cocoa. It is my second cocoa. We are grateful to Forestry Commission and Rudia for this project. Manager at Plantations Department of Forestry Commission, Valerie Fume Nasa is happy about the gains so far. The farmers depend on these non-timber forest products for what they do uh, for their livelihoods. The Forestry Commission is also looking for a solution to a problem that we have with the modified tonja, where there's a gap between harvesting the food crops and then waiting till the trees mature. So when the trees mature, the farmers will get fed 40%. The Forestry Commission will get 40%, the landowners will get 50%, and then the community gets a social responsibility of 5%. But the gap between harvesting of the food crops and the maturity of the trees is so wide that the farmers need something to motivate them to continue going into the forest and helping to protect the forest 
and also getting some benefit from it. So black pepper, um, grains of paradise and even beekeeping, through this project we have realized that it is possible to do this under canopy. Despite the progress, there are concerns among farmers about marketing. Mrs. Nasa, however, says the University of Energy and Natural Resources in Sunyani has research into market potentials of non-timber forest products. Project. One of the students has done an in-depth study about marketing of these specific, specific NTFs. And we also have ESNAP, who deals in exports of these non-timber products as one of our major partners and is helping the farmers through an initial research that we did to ensure that the farmers can get market for their products. We have just realized that locally there is a very good market for the black From Kumasi, for Joy News, Oim Interior reports. Let's stay in Kumasi because leaders of Zongo communities there are calling for intensified crackdown on illicit drug peddling and use in order to stamp out youth violence. President of the Council of the Zongo Chiefs in the Ashanti region observes parenting failures account for the strength. He believes dedicating the upcoming Ramadan for, uh, to pray for God's mercies through Quranic recital and teaching may be a significant way of finding a lasting solution to persistent violence involving Zongo youth. Nanaya Aljima has more in this report. Two youth groups affiliated to National Democratic Congress clashed at party office in Kumase early this year. A member of party militia group, the Hawks, shot and killed a rival group colleague while another was left seriously wounded. One just pulled out a gun, we were looking at him, he started firing, got to this young man, fired him, gunned him down, left, came back within some few minutes and pumped additional three bullets in his stomach. It's, it's something that I cannot even phantom. After doing this, he went straight to the other guy. And the other guy was just begging him to stop. But then he has already shot him and he pumped additional bullets on him. Almost all members from the two groups are from the Zongos and have known each other over time. The clashes between rival factions gives cause for worry. Naba Musa Akabonga is chief of Frafra community and president of the Council of Zongo Chiefs in Ashanti region. He believes physical efforts of law enforcers must be augmented with spiritual intervention for the desired result. If we are giving them good training, would they behave the way they are behaving? I think the answer is no. Parents in the Zongo communities, a good number of us, are not responsible. We do not associate much with our children. The most painful aspect of it is that the Quran teaches us, the Muslims, how to handle our children, our family, our wives, our parents, our friends, our associates. Everything is in the Quran. It looks as if they patronize uh, intake of drugs too much. And the question here is, who are the importers of the drugs? But our children don't go outside to import drugs. It is parents, people who have children, women who have husbands and children, men who have wives and children. What the government should do to help the youth is to be strict on the importance of illegal drugs. Influence of uh, money, like the case of the politicians. They use money. And if you hear the amount that sometimes some of them receive, it's insulting. Whether or not troublemakers will heed admonition from parents will continue to agitate the minds of peace-loving and well-meaning citizens. Naba Akabonga shares his opinion. A child is a child. You can be 100 years old. If your parents are around, you are still their child. It is the responsibility of parents to take care of their children. In Islam, we don't have small child and big child. Child is child. So it is our responsibility to control them. Nana Ojima reporting. You're watching Join News today. I'm Benis Abubedu Lansa. Coming up in business shortly, the Ghana Investment Promotion Centre defends its investment data, saying there's enough evidence of huge capital inflows.
for anybody to say that um, the numbers we bring are only tensions is pretty unfortunate yeah, because it's not real, it's not true. Daokwa is standing by with details, kindly stay.